Happy Friday, friends. Today I want to share a new to me delivery model that I learned about recently in case it's new and of interest to some of you too. So recently I had an opportunity to look at a warm shell base build construction contract. I hadn't heard the terms cold or warm shell before, so I did what any good lawyer would do and I googled them and I thought I'd share what I learned. So a cold shell building is one with an unfinished interior with limited or no heating, ventilation, aircon, lighting, etc. And one situation I think where this might come about is where um, a developer is building a, a commercial building that will be let to a landlord who is then going to let sublet some of the building to various tenants. The tenants might be businesses like maybe a supermarket or a food hall or something like that with very particular specifications for the services and fit out. And this is then, um, those requirements might be unknown at the time of procuring the overall base build and so it's done as a cold shell. After the finished cold shell base build is leased to the incoming landlord, the landlord might then procure construction of the warm shell services and possibly the fit out. And often the anticipated tenant will have provided the design of the warm shell so that the heating, the aircon, the lighting all aligns with their particular requirements. And the warm shell will bring that part of the building up to a ready to lease state um, so that it's primed to receive further improvements or fit out by the tenant. As a lawyer involved in drafting or reviewing contracts for this kind of model, one of my key concerns would probably be coordination risk among the various consultants and designers and contractors who are very likely all contracted to different parties, some to the developer, some to the landlord, some to the tenant. And some of that risk could be resolved by novating some of those contracts to the relevant cold or warm shell contractor, um, but sometimes they're going to be in you know, separate, distinct project teams. Another concern for me would be how does the warm shell fit out gel with the rest of the building. And an example of this might be uh, a building that has particular ESD objectives that are the responsibility of the cold shell contractor who's contracted to the, the developer. Then the landlord comes along, brings in a different contract to deliver the warm shell or the fit out. And so they need to be obliged to deliver their part of the project in such a way that it doesn't detrimentally impact the overall building's energy ratings. That's what I think. But what do you think? Maybe you think there are other risks that are more important and I'd love to hear about them. Let me know in the comments.